Praise the Lord, everyone. Brother Rupe here with Sister Gretchen. And uh, we are still in Gettysburg, uh, Pennsylvania. And we're leaving this morning. And before we leave, we're going to give you our daily devotional. This one's called Nonconformity. And a little bit of a heads up. This one's a little more deep, you yes, know. It is. And that's called growing in God. Yeah. You uh, go to another level when it comes to scripture and your personal walk with the Lord. But I have no doubt it'll be, y'all will enjoy it just as much as the other ones. We always want to keep keep growing. That's right. There, You know, we're not supposed to stay stagnant. If you're not moving, you're dying. So you're, If you're not growing, you're backsliding. That's right. So you've got to keep going forward. But uh, anyway, hope y'all get blessed by it like we did. Yes, amen. Okay. Uh, Romans 2.12 no, I said that backwards. Romans 12, 2. <laughs> you dyslexic? <laughs> no, not really. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes, amen. Oswald Chambers is quoted as saying, Measure your growth in grace by your sensitiveness to sin. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, so the more you grow mm. in God the more repelled you should be by sin. Absolutely, yes. Especially your own. So, <laughs> Especially your own, yeah. Or my own. Or Yeah, I mean, we have to take personal responsibility. Absolutely. You know? It's which the only is, way we grow. Which is not a message that people want to hear today. And it's not an easy thing to do. Personal responsibility. You know, it's definitely not an easily inward thing to do. No, it's not. So here we go. Imagine a culture in which there is no word to describe deception. No lie has ever been told and no one has ever considered deviating from the truth. This culture has such clear lines of authority that it would occur to no one to assert his own rights. Man, what a world that would be, huh? <laughs> right. Or violate another's rights. It has a complete absence of conflict, a perfectly united fellowship, and a plan that every single, everyone single-mindedly pursues. Well, that's what the Garden Eden was designed to be. That's true. Before sin crept in. Absolutely. There's no discord there. No harmony. It's the utopia that human beings have instinctively envisioned, right. <laughs> yet never achieved. Yeah, you'll never achieve your utopia. <laughs> no, we'll never see that on this side. No, but we no. can make an effort to be as close to perfection as possible. Right. Such was the culture of heaven before Satan fell, like lightning from his high estate. As far as we can tell mm. from Scripture, Lucifer's rebellion was an isolated incident. He drew many followers, one-third of heaven's host. According to many interpretations of Revelations 12, 4, but was not in any way typical of the remainder of heaven's inhabitants. Ooh, yeah. If, if, if Satan can convince a third of the angels to rebel against God, you don't have to stand a chance by, no, on your own. You will never succeed on your own. You don't. You don't stand a chance. Mm -mm. No, heaven culture was perfect. Who, except for a being as prideful as Satan, mm. would have wanted to mess that up? Right. I mean, come on, you know. We can't relate to a society in which evil is foreign. We're not nearly innocent enough for that. We've grown up with sin all around us, showing up in violence, mm. bitterness, and anger, yes. lust and greed, yes. and all sorts of idolatries. True. But in the enormous span of cosmic history, our earth has gone tragically wrong for one, for only a well-defined moment, a brief sliver of eternity. Mm. What we've accepted as normal is drastically abnormal. I mean, look at society today. Everything's getting perverted. Everything, yeah. God's eternal kingdom will not accept any element of rebellion. Regardless of how comfortable we've become in the past with human rebellion, we need to be terribly uncomfortable with it now. 
we have to change. Yes. Yeah, you know, we were discussing this, how uh, the closer you get to the Lord, the more repulsive your sin should become to you. Absolutely. You know, Amen. those little ugly thoughts about other people and uh, we that should offend us internally, you know, because it's yeah. not our place to judge anybody. And that's just one example of, you know, getting our thoughts changed. It should make us repugnant that we yes. uh, behave that way if we, yes. if we are. Our worship of God is to involve a radical transformation to his culture, mm. a society in which all disobedience is a horrifying thought. No lion, no lust, no discord, and no rebellion. Our minds must fit the eternal patterns of heaven, not the momentary aberrations of earth. We are citizens of a very different kingdom than we've ever known. Hmm. The ways of this world hold nothing for us anymore. That's right. Our conformity is over. Transformation must begin. Yes. And we're not part of the... Uh... Uh, the world's kingdom. We're part of God's kingdom. Two kind of ki two kinds of kingdoms in, in this world: man's kingdom and God's kingdom. All the unrest, wars, famines, and riots. <clears throat> that's uh, that's not God's kingdom. That's man's kingdom. Man-made. We need to stay away from that. Yeah. We need to stay away from that. We need to be engaged in the world. Vote. Pay our taxes have outreach. We need to do all that, but keep it still at a distance because it's man's kingdom. We're part of the kingdom of God. That's we're right. We're part of another kingdom and we're going to a different place. That's right. And we don't have to involve ourselves in other people's drama and trauma. You know, their, their king is Satan. Our king is Jesus Christ. That's right. And I mean, I know we have family and friends that go through trials and tribulations and yeah, we need to pray for them. We need to be there for them. Yes. But you know, we don't have to wallow in the mud that some people choose to get in. Right. And live their whole life in. Right. It's usually their own. And it's hard. It's hard separating from family and friends. It can be. But yeah. sometimes, you know, it's just you have to choose. What are you going to, what is your life going to be? Are you going to be sucked in with all of the uh, craziness? <laughs> or are you going to live in the spirit? And dwell on the things of the Lord. Right. And I promise you, if you do that, you'll have a peace you can't even comprehend. Amen. You know, you'll rise above all of that. Yes. So we thank you. We're blessed that y'all joined us today. Uh, we hope y'all have a wonderful day. Uh, go out to church. It's Sunday. And be blessed and worship and praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs>